congrats on the the the, the success of today and uh, busting everybody out. I think it was twenty nine buses. Yeah, I mean it's, it's good. It's exciting to be able to give the kids an opportunity to come out and enjoy themselves and the festivities of the park. Yeah. Along with coming to see the show, it's cool. Yeah. Do you want to try and like preach like responsibility, like if you do good things or if you give back, you see the things that come full circle. Like, is that another but, reason or just? I just want people to have a good time. Yeah, I just want to have a good time. I don't want to preach anything. I must leave the preaching for the preachers. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I let my actions and activities that I'm involved in speak for for me instead of me trying to, you know, convey things that messaging that people won't actually receive from me. No, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not sure they're ready to receive that from me. Right. You know, and it's cool when they when they see what I actually do. Mm-hmm. And and those are the things that like what I'm doing is as an actual artist, I'm being successful as an artist and an entrepreneur. And the things that I say may not be something that you would uh, expect or look forward to hearing from a role model. Right. But it's just my choices as an artist. Right. You know, to write the harsh reality. So I'll always be inspiring to those kids that got on those buses today. BMAs is coming up. R&B singer Kanye West is up against Eminem in four categories um, for, for video of the year. Love Lockdown versus We Made You. Uh, any predictions? That's tough. I mean, because neither one of them are really confrontational artists. M's probably more confrontational than Kanye. Or, like, he's able to make you laugh. Like, M boundaries are different. He could put on a dress and it's nothing to matter. I'll put on a dress, finish. Benito, done. <laughs> Career finished, done. <laughs> Get out of here. You understand what I'm saying? Like, right. you can do that, and their boundaries are just different. Right. So, so you judge them different. They Well, they do. Right. Like, when you say VMAs or when you say Grammys and stuff like that, they both have have uh, trophy cases full. Mm-hmm. Both Kanye and them. M House, I, I said, damn, how many trophies they gave you? Like, it's it, all over the place. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I'll be like, damn, they didn't give me shit. I don't have one. I had 16 Grammy nominations, right. not one trophy, and, and still the largest debut in hip hop artist to date. It's yeah. three, yeah. So I got that, right? Right. I mean, that's a I good can thing. I always to, bring that up. That's a good one to pull out. Yeah. It should get like written yeah, underneath right there. every time. Top that, sucker. <laughs> have I not showed up? Right. My worst, the, the worst album, the album they point to and say was the worst record I've ever made was the Curtis LP. And when they said that, I didn't understand it because I was like, this had I Get Money on it. <laughs> this had AO Technology. This had, you know, hit records. Yeah. I'll Still Kill featuring Akon. It, it just was me actually working with artists. Right. Because I never ventured out and, and did collaborations and stuff like that. And they used to just... 50 Cent content being on the record, so the right. record feels harder when it doesn't have me collaborating with artists that uh, would be like all of the commercial hit records that are out there. Right. If you got a record, name one record, because you're an expert. <laughs> right. if, you, if you pick the top 10, you got to be an expert. We got to call them an expert now. Name one record that made it into the top 10 in the last 16, no, 18. That's a year and a half. 18, 18 months, right? Yeah. In the last year and a half, there was a hip hop record that didn't have an R and B chorus. That's a good one. Uh, damn, hold on, let me think right now. I get money. It's I get money. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, that, like, so you, I look at myself like I'm the last of what's left of hip hop. <laughs> Is that, is that safe to say that right now? If you think about it, there is no such thing as a, a, a hip-hop artist that will make a record that made it into the top ten in the last year and a half. Right. That's since the last time I released my record, you haven't heard a hip-hop record. Right. You've heard what those collaborations with R&B artists. Even, look, Jay-Z's new single, Rihanna and Kanye right. West. Two R&B artists. <laughs> look at the new... The, yeah. <laughs> what was his last album? Okay, I mean, if that's his last album, we, you could wrap that title around him. Right. So right. now, until we see, until he delivers again. a rap record, we got to call him an R&B artist for right. now on, until we get back to the next project where he makes a rap record. Right. So, just, and, and if you look at, this is just the way I think, you know, the right. way I look at things. I look at it and go, wow, so, because 
I've offered aggression early on in my career. The expectations are higher. They look for me to save all of what we originally fell in love with. Right. As hip hop is concerned. I attempted to create Family Day in my actual neighborhood, you know, for the kids that couldn't actually have chaperones to bring them on the actual buses to come and enjoy this because I'm actually one of those kids that wouldn't have had the chaperone. Right. You know, and I understand what it's like to have, you know, people come back and to pretty much say, yo, it was crazy right. and enjoy the festivities and everything there and to kind of be disappointed. Right. You know, to not have been a part of that. So, you know, I thought it all the way through and I said I'd finish up in the actual neighborhood. I show up there and I, you know, do a little something out there. And, I mean, it was cool. I had the NBA sponsorships, I had uh, Staples, um, Home Depot, a lot of different uh, independent businesses in the actual community were supportive right. of it and a part of it. And then what I ran into was there was a lot of standards being placed on me doing the event. Right. That, that aren't placed on... And, and was it just because you were doing it or because you might be performing? Well, it's because of my association to it. Right. You know, and then you, you have people who are excited and really receptive to the idea and then you have people that uh, just agree to disagree and mm -hmm. they're miserable. <laughs> you know but, what I mean? And just but, wanted to stay yeah. like that for everybody else. They, yeah. it, it disappoints them to see the other people happy around them. Right. The most disappointing thing I thought was that the the like the story in the post that kind of started the whole thing of like yeah. people are scared. That's business they, they, as usual. But they, it was all anonymous sources. It was right. all sources but say. The so, why is the post reporting an event that hasn't taken place? Right. Did no one get killed that day? Did no tragedies, no accidents, nothing happened? Right. Why are they so interested in that? Right. You know, it's just because. They knew that they could actually sell newspapers based on it. Right. And I've been utilized in that way since I started my career. Right. And then what about, so, and after the story, Bloomberg came out and he was like, you know, we met with 50. Right. And he, he made it seem like, oh, so good now. Yeah, but people, people will point to Bloomberg and make immediately think that I would be upset with Mayor Bloomberg. Right. Or the governor. You know, and both of them, like, he wanted me to have the actual event. What happened was the post, the publicity from the news coverage and Before the different publications happened. makes it such that you tell me not to promote the event and then give it national coverage. Right. You know, so then the fear factor comes in is can you control 100,000 people being in your neighborhood? Because you might not be sure of uh, a turnout at a venue where you're a regular concert venue, but in the actual neighborhood, they would show up, everyone. Right. Q-Tip was in the office the other day, right. and he, he, like, his words were like, I just feel like people have this outdated uh, look of New Yorkers, like, we can't handle adversity, or we can't handle being a crowd, and then he particularly said, like, with Bloomberg's administration, that they just have an outdated view of, like, young black people and what they can achieve. I'm not sure that, see, a lot of that pressure would be put on Bloomberg again when he was supportive of me having the event. Right. You know, I, I just think... In general, they look at whoever's in control. Mm -hmm. Of course, Mayor Bloomberg would be the person that you would say says yes or no right. completely. But you know, of course, he's going to also look at you know the, the police commissioner and people that can give him knowledgeable answers to say is this going to be a safe situation? Right. And if they tell him no, then it doesn't actually happen. You know, but I, I understand like he is the person that we look to. As soon as something don't go right, Mayor Bloomberg, right? Like they get mad at him, and it ain't his fault.